everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of Tech Talk. We are Group B5 and I'm your host, Ayush Roll number 26 and today we have a fascinating topic to dive into. Today, we'll be exploring the world of cache memory and its importance in the realm of computing. But before we get started, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Cache memory is a type of computer memory that plays a vital role in enhancing the overall performance of our machines. It acts as a temporary storage space for data that is frequently accessed by the CPU or central processing unit. Its primary purpose is to reduce the time it takes for the CPU to access this data, thus optimizing the system's speed and efficiency. Now, let's delve deeper into the specifics. Cache memory can be categorized into two types, level 1, L1, cache and level 2, L2, L2, cache. Let's start with L1 cache. L1 cache, often referred to as primary cache, is built directly into the CPU. This placement allows for lightning fast access to frequently used data. It's like having a small but incredibly swift storage space right next to the processor, ready to serve up information at a moment's notice. Moving on to L2 cache, also known as secondary cache. While not as fast as L1 cache, it still provides a substantial performance boost. L2 cache is located on the motherboard, separate from the CPU. Although it may take a bit longer to retrieve data from L2 cache compared to L1 cache, it is still significantly faster than accessing data from main memory. By having multiple levels of cache memory, computer systems can take advantage of the speed benefits offered by each level. The CPU first checks, first checks the L1 cache for data it needs. If it's not found, it proceeds to search the L2 cache. And if the data is still not found, the CPU then retrieves it from the main memory. Cache Hello, I'm Dhanashri Rajput from group E5 and I'll be continuing with how is cache memory used. Caches are utilized to store temporary files using both hardware and software components. A hardware cache such as CPU cache is a small proportion of memory embedded within the computer's processor. Its purpose is to store frequently accessed or recently used computer instructions. Similarly, many applications and software have their own caches. These caches serve as temporary storage for application-specific data, files, or instructions, allowing for quicker retrieval when needed. For instance, web browsers employ their own cache to store information from previous browsing sessions. This enables loading of web content as the browser can retrieve data from cache rather than downloading it again. This is particularly beneficial while re-watching a video from platforms like YouTube. Various other software systems also incorporate caching mechanism. Operating systems use caches to store commonly accessed instructions and files, optimizing their performance. Content delivery networks use utilize caches on the server side to deliver websites more swiftly. Domain name systems use caches to store information used in converting domain names to IP addresses. Additionally, databases employ caches to store to reduce latency in query processing. In summary, caches are used to store temporary files through a combination of hardware and software. They enhance systems performance by storing access data, instructions or files, allowing for faster retrieval and reducing the need for repeated resource intensive operation. You know how is cache used as explained previously. Now let's dive into the concept of how cache memory works. Cache memory is an integral part of modern computer systems, designed to bridge the gap between the fast processor and the relatively slower main memory. It acts as a temporary storage space, holding frequently accessed data and instructions to speed up the overall performance of the system. So imagine you're working on your computer and you open a web browser to visit your favorite website. The first time you access this site, the data and instructions needed to display it are fetched from the main memory and stored in the cache memory. So now let's say you decide to navigate to another page on the same website. Since the data for that page is already in the cache, the processor can quickly retrieve it from there instead of going all the way back to the main memory. This reduces the latency and improves the overall system performance. Cache memory operates based on a principle called locality of reference. There are two main types of locality, temporal locality and the other one is spatial locality. Temporal locality refers to the fact that if data or instructions are accessed once, they are likely to be accessed again in the near future. 
Spatial locality, on the other hand, means that if a particular memory location is accessed, nearby locations are also likely to be accessed soon. To efficiently utilize cache memory, computer systems employ various caching techniques, such as cache lines, cache levels, and cache replacement policies like LRU, which is least recently used, or LFU, least frequently used. These techniques ensure that the most relevant and the most frequently accessed data stays in the cache, while less used data is evicted. Now you might be wondering, how, it, how does the processor know if the data it needs is in the cache or not? When the processor needs data, it checks the mem cache memory first. If the data is found, it's called a cache hit and the process can access it quickly. However, if the data is not found in the cache, it's called a cache miss. In case of cache miss, the processor has to fetch the data from the main memory and bring it to the cache. This retrieval takes more time and slows down the system performance momentarily. However, once the data is in the cache, subsequent access to the same data becomes faster, resulting in cache hits. Therefore, cache memory is an essential component for improving the efficiency of modern computer systems, from personal computers to large-scale servers. It helps reduce the latency and enhances overall system performance by storing frequently accessed data and instructions close to the processor. Hello, myself, Tanish Dhangar, roll number 27, and I will quickly brief you about the diagram of cache memory. Cache memory is a high-speed, small-capacity memory located between the CPU and main memory in a computer system. Its primary purpose is to reduce the time it takes for the CPU to access data by storing frequently used instructions and data closer to the processor. The diagram of cache memory typically illustrates three levels, L1, L2, and L3 caches arranged in a hierarchy. The L1 cache closest to the CPU is the smallest but fastest cache. It holds a subset of the most frequently accessed data and instructions. L2 cache is larger than L1 and serves as a secondary cache layer. It stores additional data and instructions to support the L1 cache. L3 cache, the largest and slowest of the three, acts as a shared cache for multiple cores or processors within a system. The arrows in the diagram indicate the flow of data and instructions between the different cache levels and the CPU. When the CPU requires data or instructions, it first checks the L1 cache. If the data is found, it is accessed quickly, avoiding the need to access lower main memory. If the data is not in the L1 cache, the CPU then checks the L2 cache and if necessary, the L3 cache before resorting to accessing data from the main memory which is relatively slower. Overall, the cache memory diagram showcases the hierarchical structure of cache levels, demonstrating how they work together to optimize the CPU's data access and improve system performance. Thank you. Myself, Roshni Nandu Dimre, role number 29. I will tell you about the advantages of cache memory. So basically, cache memory has several advantages over main memory. First, it is much faster than main memory, which means that the CPU can access frequently used data more quickly. This can lead to significant improvements in system performance. Second, cache memory reduces the amount of traffic on the system bus, which is the communication pathway between the CPU and main memory. By storing frequently used data in the cache, the CPU can avoid accessing main memory as often, which frees up the bandwidth on the system bus for other tasks. Hello everyone, I am Manish Dhane, I am from group E5, role number 25. Now we will see disadvantages of cache memory. First is corruption. Caches can be corrupted. Uh, data corruption can cause applications such as browsers to crash or display data incorrectly. Next is performance. Caches are generally small stores of temporary memory. If they get too large, they can cause performance to degrade. They also can con consume memory that other applications might need, negatively impacting application performance. Now, next is outdated information. Sometimes an app cache displays old or outdated information. This can cause an application glitch or return misleading information. If a website or application gets updated on the internet, using a cached version from previous session would not reflect the update. This is not a problem for a static content, but it is a problem for a dynamic content that changes over sessions or between sessions. Now, what are dynamic memory? Dynamic memory means that all types of data are stored in a same memory. Uh, so in short, this cache memories 
are more expensive than other memories like primary memory and secondary memory. The storage capacity is completely in use. Cache stores the data temporarily 